us that said confess, confess okay and then on top of that there was a big red, blue rock that says believe. Believe. believe and then on top of that is accept. okay except all right so <laughs> there's the admit one ticket the cross that says confess and then the blue rock that says belief, and then the green check that says, and it stands for, I admit I'm a sinner, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Christ, and I accept his blood. In other words, those are the steps to lead someone in the very simplest of the salvation prayer. And it can even get simpler to that. You can simply say, Jesus come into my heart. Okay? It doesn't have to be any complicated thing. Okay, let's go through it again. Yeah, now we have to do it by <laughs> Okay, one more time. One more time. Okay. First is admit, admit confess, 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 believe, accept. accept. Now top down. Accept, believe, believe, confess, admit. Admit, confess, confess, believe, believe, accept. Accept. See, I got it wrong. Okay. Down. Accept. Believe. Confess. Confess. Admit. Now let's try it with that looking. Got it? Yep. Admit. Confess. Believe. Believe. Accept. Accept. Down. Accept. Believe. Okay, let's start down. Accept. Believe. Confess. Admit. Up. Admit. Confess. Believe. Accept. Got it? Yeah. Now we can lead someone to the Lord. Yes. That's right. I, I know what you're going to do. You're going to be in that, that moment and you're going to say, uh, I see something about an admit ticket. <laughs> no, 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 just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. I get it. Something about admit one, admit one. Pastor's. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Holy Spirit's going to guide you. That's right. Amen. Matthew 5.13 says, We are the salt of the earth. But I don't like this next phrase. But if the salt has lost its savor, mm -hmm. if there is some congregation, some groups of Americans, Christians around the globe, have some of them lost their savior? Or savior, savior yeah, but their savior too. Uh -oh. <laughs> but, but their savior, in other words... Are they getting into the rut to where they just get dressed and they go to church? I mean, I guess it's better to go to church than not. But is there some of that where they're, they're just kind of going through the motions? I know that when I was growing up, it seemed easy. Now, when the, first, first, when the, the church first started, there was a lot of excitement because the church had just started. And, um, but it seemed like then we moved into the nice building. Then it became a little harder to be excited. It's like, oh well, you know, now we're in a nice building, now we've made it. And then it seemed like with every passing year, everything kind of became the same road. You know, it was the same song leader singing the same songs, the same kind of sermons, you know what I'm saying? And so, a lot of times, it's easy for the salt to lose its savor. We've got to stay fresh with the Lord. That comes from Yes, attending from worshiping our prayer closet, reading our Bible, praising Him and worshiping Him. We don't want to lose our Savior. Our Savior. Yeah. <laughs> We're Savior as well. Wherewith shall I be salted? If this forth is good for nothing. What's that saying? Is that saying that if we're a Christian, we've accepted Christ? If we're not witnessing to someone else that we're good for nothing? Yeah, I don't want to believe that. But unfortunately... I didn't write it. <laughs> I'm not the one you have to answer to. Unfortunately, Christ is saying, if we have lost our savor, we're good for nothing and should be cast out and trodden underfoot of men. Oh, wow. wow. That's hard. You're the light of the world. Now, we know Jesus is the ultimate light of the world. Okay? Amen. But John 14 and 12 says, if you believe in me and the works that I do, Greater works than these shall you do, because I go to the Father. Amen. He gave us power, he gave us authority to serve him. He says, people don't light a candle and don't put it under a bushel, because it'll catch the bushel on fire. No, no, because there's, he's saying he won't hide it, okay? Do some people hide the fact that they're Christians? Yes. yes. Matter of fact, some of them hide it so well, you wouldn't even know they're Christians. Matter of fact, you'd be surprised to find that they are Christians. 
but not us, right? Instead, we want to light the candle. We're not going to put it under a bushel. Or instead, we're going to put that on a candlestick so that it can give light to all that are in the house. In other words, as Christians, we walk around our daily lives looking for ways to minister, looking for ways to be a witness. And we want people to look at us and say, well, what was it? I think it was Leslie Ann uh, mentioned here a couple of weeks ago a story where she was in line at a grocery store and, and the lady asked her, why is it you're always so happy? Those are the common kind of questions. Those are the kind of comments we want to see. He says, let our light shall be so shiny and bright before men they see our good works and glorify our Father. Now notice it doesn't say glorify us. One of the things that I think is wrong with some of the, uh, the ministries, especially the TV ministries, they're trying to get glory for themselves. And just this past week, uh, I was uh, Dan was at reading some, some of the newspaper articles, and I was commenting on them in light of Bible prophecy. And uh, somehow it came up, and I said, look, I said, uh, uh, someone wrote me an email and said, well, just why are you an apostle? I said, well, uh, talk on. I said, first of all, God has not told me I'm an apostle. Now, as I look at, let's see, where are they? It's over there, the first one. First That's first the first apostle. As, as I look at that description, compared to the other offices here, that one certainly seems to describe me the most. But God hadn't told me I'm an apostle. But the point is, I'm just another branch deserved to be gathered and tossed into the fire. I'm just in, say the blood of Jesus. That's right. Amen. Yeah, right? We're, I'm just another vine dresser. Nothing special about me. I don't want to receive any praise. All praise goes to the Father. Amen. Okay. Amen. We do the best we can, though, with that understanding, right? Yeah. Okay. We glorify the Father, which is in heaven. Matthew 21. And you're familiar with the parable, but let's go through it. Here's the parable. There was a certain householder. Who's the householder? Jesus. He planted a vineyard, that's the earth. He hedged it about, in other words, he put down his word. He digged a wine press, and he built a tower. In other words, he, he made everything ready to grow his kingdom. Let people come to accept him. Then he gave it out to some husbandmen, and then he went to a far country. What's that far country? Heaven, Heaven. that's right. For how long? Eh, about 2,000 years. Okay. About 2,000. Then the time of the fruit drew near. He sent his servants to a husband. He said, look, I'd like to have some of my fruits. The husband took his servants, beat one, killed another, and stoned another. He sent other servants, more than the first. <laughs> they did the same to them likewise. Finally, he said, ah, I know what I'll do. I'll send my son, because they will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, ah, this is the heir. Let us kill him. Seize on his inheritance. They caught him, cast him out of the vineyard. In other words, they caught Jesus. They took him outside the city of Jerusalem, remember? Yes. And they crucified him on a cross, okay? And slew him. And when the Lord of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? He will miserably destroy those wicked men. Uh, then, no, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I must be wrong. He is going to rapture them off of the earth so that... <laughs> I don't know what it says, is it? He's going to miserably destroy those men and will let out his vineyard to other husbands, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. So what's the point? The point is, is he's given us the things we need to be a witness, to be that salt and light for him. Have you noticed how that's kind of been a theme over the last two or three Sundays, what he's talked about? Have you noticed that? Yes. Luke 19, 12. And he said, Therefore a certain nobleman went to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. I know it seems like a simple one, but not necessarily. It's not. He called his ten servants, and he delivered to them ten pounds. I, I wonder if that's why the English call their currency a pound. And said unto them, Occupy till I come. You see, you see that occupy till I come? What does that mean? Does that mean we're supposed to just sit on the pew? No. <laughs> I'm occupying. <laughs> or does it mean we're supposed to be doing something? He says, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him. Sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to rule over us. 
How many people out there this morning are saying, I don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. I want to go to church. Matter of fact, two nights ago I had a dream. And it was I, I was impressed from the dream that I needed to call a kid that I was uh, friends with when I was back in the 6th and 7th and 8th grades. I had the impression that that he was like dying or something was wrong, and cancer came to mind. So I called the office and I said, look, I don't, I'm not on Facebook, I don't want to be on Facebook, but I know you have Facebook. Would you find this guy? Well, she found him. I mean, in just like 60 seconds. She says, but uh, you're too late. I said, how's that? She says, well, he died about six months ago, the age of 58. Sure enough, it was him, his mother, I remember her name, and his sister's names, and it was, but I didn't see anything in his obituary about where his funeral was at a church, or a pastor residing over his funeral, or anything. Had nothing on there about church. And I thought, hmm, maybe I'm too late. Sometimes we're too late. Mm. The time, I mean, through the years, the thoughts occurred to me. I remember there was times when I thought, well, maybe I'll dig him up and look him up and see what he's doing. Now I wished I had. Was that a soul I missed? So he says, all right, look it. <clears throat> Came to pass, when he's returned, having received the kingdom, he commanded the service to be called to him. To whom he gave the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. To the first, he says, I'm going to give you ten pounds. Then he says, well done, thou good servant, sir, thou, well done, thou good servant, because you have been faithful over very little. You have authority over ten cities. Now, this is the servant, remember where he gave one, one five, brought back ten, gave one two, brought back five, okay. He says, likewise to another one. He says, I'm going to make you ruler over five cities, because he brought back five pounds. Another came and says, Lord, there's only one pound, which I've kept laid up in a napkin. Because I feared you, I knew you're an austere man. In other words, a hard master. God is telling us he expects us to work. He expects us to serve. Austere man. Because you take up where you don't lay down. Turn me, give me a little bit more blind. I'm going to find myself wrong. And you reap where you have not sowed. In other words, he's saying you got to do it. It's not enough. We can't just say, Lord, I want you to do this and sit back and do nothing. There's a, a story about two men that were sitting on a porch. One guy said, I pray the Lord to plant that field. The other one said, I pray the Lord to help me plant that field. Which one planted the field? See, if we want to win souls, if we want to serve the Lord, we can't just pray and expect it all to happen. <clears throat> Out of your own mouth, I'll judge you, you wicked servant. Because you knew I was an austere man. You knew that I take up where I have not laid down. You knew that I sometimes reap where I did not sow. we got to do it. That's what he's saying. Wherefore, he gives, uh, then give us not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury. What's this talking about? What's he saying? Wherefore then gave us not thou my money into the bank, so that at my coming I would have required my own usury. What's he saying? He's saying, shoot or carry bullets. If you can't preach, you help someone that can. If you can't win souls, then you help someone that can. Okay? He understands not everybody's a preacher. He understands not everybody does radio, not everybody does TV. But he's saying, at least we can give so we can help. Shoot or carry bullets. Win souls or sweep the church or something. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him that had the one pound and give it to him that had the ten pounds. Because the Lord says uh, to the Lord that he hath had ten pounds. And he says, Unto everyone that hath yet, which hath been given from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. Now, we've talked about this before, that he's probably talking about our, our own salvation. Those mine enemies, which would not that I have reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. So, yeah, it's in a time when the enemies are slain, but I don't want to believe some of the negative things that says there, but that says we better be working. 
Now, <clears throat> for everyone shall be salted with fire, and every sacrifice shall be salted with salt. What does it mean for everyone shall be salted with fire? Remember what we said salt was? Purifier. To purify. When Jesus returns and he <sighs> blows his glory down on the earth, as that glory hits each one of us, the Bible says that out of our belly, I've talked about this a lot of times, out of our belly flows rivers of living water and all of a sudden we flame on. To the center they fall in a pile of ashes and bones. But, what is this salted with fire? It means that at that moment, all of our works that are not in him are all burned up. But, he says, that if they come through the burning, they're purified like gold seven times. In other words, those things that are not built up, bur burned up, are standing. He goes on to say, salt is good. But if the salt has lost its saltiness, same thing as the other verse, wherewith will it season? Have, have salt in yourselves and have peace one another. He's saying, make certain that our works are in him so they'll stand. What does that mean? I believe that there's some pastors in the pulpits this morning that weren't called to be in the pulpit. It's a job. Mm -hmm. There's some people leading praise and worship in churches this morning. Maybe they're called, but the reason they're doing it is so that they can get praise and recognition from the congregation. See, if we take any praise, we're taking it from the Father. We don't want any praise, right? <clears throat> no man, when he had lighted a candle, covers it with a vessel, similar to the other verse, or put it under a bed. Nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest. Neither anything hid that shall be not made known or come abroad. That's kind of scary, isn't it? Can you imagine all of the world seeing everything we've done? But I believe that the, the Bible teaches that those things that are washed in the blood are as far as the east is to the west. And they will neither come into the remembrance ever again. So I believe when we're washed in the blood that those things aren't shown. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You guys got to wake up this morning. It's cold outside. But it's, it's going to be warm in here, right? Okay. Take heed, therefore, how you hear. For whosoever hath, to him should be given. Whosoever has not, be taken even that way. See, it's kind of saying the same thing, but it's saying it in different ways. <clears throat> Lay not, not up to yourselves treasure in earth, where moth and rust do corrupt, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up to yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust corrupt, where the neither threat, thieves break through or steal. Now, this is the important part here. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Spirit of Prophecy Church, let me ask you this morning where's your heart? Is your heart just trying to pay the bills? Raise the children? Those are all fine to do. We need to do those. But those are number two things. <laughs> What's the number one thing? Serve the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. Right? Yes, when He's the center of our focus, what does the Bible say? It says, <clears throat> Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and His righteousness, and all these other things, they'll be added unto you. But a lot of times we get things out of order. And a lot of times we're seeking wealth when we're not when we should be seeking the Lord. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> the light of the body is the eye. It's a little bit deep here, but if you'll look, you'll understand it. If therefore the eye is single, the whole body should be full of light. What's it saying? It's basically saying that the light of our body, of our life, is the eye. David says, I will not put anything before my face that is not pure before my Lord. Okay? We in America, we got to watch what we're watching on TV and the movies. We got to watch it. I mean, we watch a lot of filthy stuff. It's, and it's hard. It's got to where now, it used to be like it was sprinkled with salt, just a little bit of filthiness. Now it's like there's a little bit of good with the filthiness. Okay? So the, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is single, what does that mean? It means you're not supposed to be married? No. 
Me and Joan are supposed to have one eye, supposed to put out one, one eye? No, no. What? It means that we are focused. See? If God's in the right place, if God is number one in our life, then our whole body will be full of life. The Bible says that, well, well, let me ask you a question. What is it that the Bible says separates us between us and our God? Sin. Sin is what separates us. But if thine eye be evil, your whole body should be full of darkness. If, th if therefore the light is in thee is darkness, how great is that darkness? Because no man can serve two masters. For either you will hate the one, love the other, or you will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now this is whole thing here is basically saying, look, it's not saying you can't have money. It's not saying you can't be wealthy. It's saying put things in the right perspective. I want to be like the guy that has lots of money and I'm working for the Lord. Amen. I'm serving the Lord. I'm using that money. I'm using my time to build up him and his, his kingdom. Because look, you can't take it with you. Matter of fact, you know how much money old man Hunt left? Yeah, you hunt, used to own most of Texas and all the oil and everything. Probably one of the wealthiest men in the, in the world. You know how much money he left? All of it. All of it. <laughs> He's exactly right. He left it all. <laughs> yeah, you think it would have been. He left it all. It's saying, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And it's righteousness. Then all these other things will be added to you. <clears throat> Fear not them, therefore, for there is nothing covered that should not be revealed and hid that should not be known. What I tell you in darkness, speak in the light. What I tell you in the ear, preach on the housetops. But Sam, that's what he said to some of the prophets or some of the disciples. He hadn't said that to me. Really? Oh, I know. When you get before the Lord... And he says, how come you didn't win more souls? You're going to say, well, 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 I lived in the 2000s. I lived in a 